From MTN News, this is Montana This Morning. Red Lodge residents pushing back on a potential new treatment facility. Had no idea that in our neighborhood, they wanted to put an alcohol and drug treatment center. Plus, Senator John Tester says a new law means more money in Montanans' wallets. I think as it gets fully implemented, it'll have more and more of an inflation impact. And bow hunting season is a day away. We have what you need to know before heading out. And good Friday morning. Welcome to Montana this morning on this September 2nd. We're so glad that you are joining us this morning. West High students continue putting heat on the district, demanding action and air conditioning. Several kids even walking out of class, questioning why AC is not a priority. I feel like it'd be good if we didn't buy like touchscreen computers. Yeah, touchscreen computers and like tons and tons of new sports equipment that we don't actually need. And we can put it towards something that the students and the teachers would like, like AC. So four rooms in the school have air conditioning, including the main office, but no classrooms have it. School District 2 in the process of installing AC in several elementary schools paid for by a 2013 grant. However, none of that money can be used for the high schools. And we want to let you know that Billing Senior also doesn't have AC. Mm. So those kids are trying to get through their, their school day, teachers too, everyone's trying to get through it, and then yeah. the heat just does not help. No, it's not. And a, a bit of a break today, still going to be quite warm out there, but next week hopefully get the AC cranked up because it, we're, we're possibly in the midst of a record heat wave as we get into this weekend into the middle part of next week, especially here in the Magic City. And we'll break it all down with the main forecast coming up here in just a bit. Yesterday, 99 to start September. Mm. It wasn't a record. We had to hit 103, didn't get there, but still a good 18 degrees above the norm. Overnight low down to 61. That was above average. Uh, with that cold front approaching, we had these winds whipping in ahead of that, so we had a top gust of 40 miles an hour. We start the month off on a dry note, so no rain, but we're still pacing ahead for the year. Still looking pretty good in terms of the drought conditions here in Yellowstone County. Now, I was just digging there. If uh, this holds true, Cody, Wyoming, your airport, 93 wow. yesterday. If that's true, uh, getting confirmation on that, you would have busted a record. And you have possibly some more records in your future, like several areas around the Q2 viewing area as we move forward. Not today, though. We're going to be a little cooler. 66 right now at the airport. Humidity at 38%. Dew points at 40. Winds out of the north at about 6 miles an hour. Enjoy the quote-unquote cool day <laughs> before it gets brutal. We'll take a look. Coming up. Mm, yes. Right. Mm, is the word. Mm, Miller. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Miller, thanks so much. Okay. We'll see you in just a little bit. Right. Two Billings businessmen are finding themselves locked in a battle with the Red Lodge community and the members there. One group wants to build an addiction recovery center. The other doesn't want to live next to it. Q2's Casey Conlin has the story. A Billings group believes they have found the perfect spot here at the Medicine Flower Lodge just north of Red Lodge. The group of recovering addicts wants to build a new drug and alcohol addiction treatment center. But neighbors are concerned, specifically with the type of people that would bring to their area. And outdated county statutes have made this fight a mess. It's a bad loophole in the system, it really is, and that's our fault. Both sides crowded into the Carbon County Commissioner's Office in Red Lodge Thursday to have their voices heard. Chairman Bill Bullock said it's the first time in history they've had an appeal for a change of use permit request. We followed the guidelines set up by Carbon County Planning to get to where we are today. Bill Vanderloos, his son Peter, and Kirk Dealer are the main investors. They say they did everything Carbon County asked up to this point, but neighbors are upset they didn't go above and beyond. Didn't even know that it was happening. Had no idea that in our neighborhood they wanted to put an alcohol and drug treatment center. Stina Bushnell gathered around 25 signatures on a petition against the proposed center. She and her husband were two of several who voiced concerns at the meeting. Are you going to put security fence all the way around the whole property? Is it going to be an open campus or a closed campus? Vanderloos and Dealer answered several of the questions in the room. Their plan is based on the California Treatment Center they both attended, a 90-day inpatient care facility with 24-hour staffing. We've seen 30-day in, inpatient treatment centers. They, it's like a revolving door. Information from my mom, the brain doesn't even start to heal for at least two months after coming off drugs or alcohol. Dealer's mother has been a mental health therapist at St. Vincent Healthcare in Billings for 27 years and voiced her support in the room. I think that we need another treatment center in Montana and we need a good one and this one has opened my eyes. According to the group, Montana only has three drug and alcohol addiction treatment facilities. 
one in Billings, one in Butte, and one in Great Falls. Even both Bullock and Commissioner Scott Blaine agreed the need is there. I get it. We don't have enough treatment facilities, and the ones we have fail miserably. I will not dissuade that, but logistically, I don't see how it can be attained on this property. It's just, it's escaping me. After two hours, the commissioners asked if the group would be okay postponing the permit's approval another 45 days. The investors asked for 20, and they settled on 28. We won't stop. One of my people I was really close to, he goes, I'm giving you this gift. And he goes, you have to give it back. And that's all we're trying to do here is show people there's another way to live. A lot of interested parties will be watching later this month. In Red Lodge, Casey Conlon, MTN News. All right, thanks so much, Casey. This morning, a warning from police has Columbus parents on edge. Authorities say a man is driving the streets trying to abduct children. A middle school girl walking home when a man pulled up in a red pickup truck beside her, claiming to be a grandfather, offering a ride. So she ran to the nearest house and he drove away. Police say the man is in his late 50s or 60s with salt and pepper hair driving a newer model pickup. Because when I first heard about the first incident, I was like, uh, kids are not allowed to be outside by themselves anymore, period. Police hope someone may have security footage of the man. They're urging parents to be on the lookout. Senator John Tester is back in Montana telling Billings residents that will soon pay less for prescription drugs. He is promoting the Inflation Reduction Act. It gives the Health and Human Services Secretary a chance to negotiate with pharmaceutical companies for a better price. Starting in 2026, costs are set to go down on 10 different drugs, followed by more in the coming years. The cost of insulin now capped at 35 bucks. Insulin hasn't changed much over the last 50 or 100 years, and uh, and people shouldn't be getting dinged when really this isn't this isn't a new cancer causing cancer treating drug. This is insulin. It's been around for 100 years. Senator Tester says he believes the bill will have a positive effect on inflation. New this morning, the nation is still reacting to President Joe Biden's primetime speech. Some say he's sounding an alarm about extremism, while others find it divisive. Bradley Blackburn has more. But as I stand here tonight, equality and democracy are under assault. Against the backdrop of Philadelphia's Independence Hall, President Biden addressed Americans to warn about what he considers a threat to the soul of the nation. MAGA forces are determined to take this country backwards, backwards to an America where there is no right to choose, no right to privacy, no right to contraception, no right to marry who you love. They promote authoritarian leaders and they fan the flames of political violence. In his primetime address, the president called out former President Trump and fervent Make America Great Again supporters, while saying he wanted to be clear that mainstream Republicans do not embrace extreme ideology. MAGA Republicans do not respect the Constitution. They do not believe in the rule of law. They do not recognize the will of the people. They refuse to accept the results of a free election. President Biden said efforts are underway across the country to undermine future elections at the state level. House Republican leader Kevin McCarthy delivered a preemptive rebuttal from Scranton, Pennsylvania, where Mr. Biden was born. Joe Biden is right. Democracy is on the ballot in November. And Joe Biden and the radical left in Washington are dismantling Americans' democracy before our very eyes. A new CBS News poll found seven in 10 Americans believe democracy and the rule of law are under threat, about the same as in the days following the January 6th attack on the U.S. Capitol. Bradley Blackburn, CBS News. Biden's address in Pennsylvania is just one of three trips to politically important swing states. Trump also has a rally planned in the Scranton area, too. I'll take a look at this. Yellowstone National Park road repairs are exceeding those expectations. It's according to the park superintendent. He says the main focus, of course, reconnecting gateway communities. Two-lane temporary road from Mammoth to Gardner should be completed by October 15th. And the north and east entrance to Cook City is expected to be passable again. It could still take years, though, to permanently construct all of those roads. A happening tomorrow, hunters are returning to the wilderness for day one of bow hunting season, but it's gonna be hot out there and hunters need to take some steps to preserve their harvest. Heat spoils meat in minutes, so scouting out hunting areas today may help you get the animal out of the field quicker. If you are lucky enough to land a buck, be sure to not waste any time trying to cool it down. 
you know, skinning it immediately is almost a necessity. Um, getting the meat into some sort of coolers or refrigerator or a walk-in cooler if you have access to that. Having a processor lined up. Hunters should make sure they have plenty of water and sunscreen when they're out hunting as well. Governor Greg Gianforte is calling on the Fish and Wildlife Service to change endangered species rules. He wrote a letter sharply criticizing a proposal to allow endangered animals to be introduced outside their historic range. Gianforte calls it the height of hubris to presume it can successfully introduce experimental populations to new ecosystems. The administration is also asking the agency to delist the grizzly bear. New this morning, we're hearing from local pharmacies that COVID-19 boosters specifically targeting the Omicron variant will be in Billings by next week. The CDC just gave full approval for the shots. Both the Pfizer and Moderna doses are ready for pharmacies and hospitals across the country. And according to Johns Hopkins, the U.S. saw an average of 500 deaths a day due to COVID-19. Mortgage rates continue to weigh down an already slowing housing market. The average rate for a 30 year mortgage rose 5% last week. That's nearly twice as much as the last two the last year's rate of 2%. Higher interest rates are forcing sellers to to change their pricing due to lower demand. And the National Association of Realtors says the sale of existing homes fell six months in a row.